Good morning, everyone. Let us discuss about Bayes' theorem in this session. This Bayes' theorem will give us the best hypothesis from some space H given the observed training data. Let us see a formal definition of the Bayes' theorem. It provides a direct method to calculate the probability of a hypothesis based on its prior probability P of H and probability of observing various data given, given the hypothesis P of D by H and observed training data P of D. Formally, this can be stated as P of H by D is equals to P of D by H multiplied with P of H divided by P of D where P of H is the prior probability of hypothesis H. P of D is prior probability of the training data. P of H by D is probability of H given D. This can also be called as posterior probability. then P of D by H, that is probability of D given H. So here you have to calculate the prior probability as well as the conditional probability. And if you substitute in this formula, you will get the value for P of H by D. And here if you observe, P of H by D increases with P of H and P of D by H. Because these two terms are there in the numerator, it is directly proportional to P of H by D. And this value decreases as P of D increases. Because P of D is in the denominator, if the denominator value increases, ultimately the value of P of H by D will decrease. Let us solve one problem under Bayes' theorem. So the probability that it is Friday and that a student is absent is 3%. As we know, most of the Fridays, new movies will be released and the students will be interested in going to movie rather than attending a class. So the probability of a student being absent is 3%. Since there are five school days in a week, we are considering only five. The probability that it is Friday is 20%. So 520 is 100. So each day has an equal probability. So probability that it is Friday is 20%. So what is the probability that a student is absent given that today is Friday? Let us solve this. Already the data that is given is probability that it is Friday and that a given student is absent. That is P of F intersection A. It is 0.03. So it is given as 3% which is equal to 3 by 100. If you simplify this, you will get 0 0.03. Next, it is also given that today is Friday. That is P of F is given which is 0 0.2. Now we should calculate probability that a student is absent given that today is Friday. So that is P of A by F we need to calculate which can be from the Bayes theorem directly, we can write it as P of F by A multiplied with P of A divided by P of F, which is 0 0.03 by 0 0.2. So actually here, the information that we have is P of F intersection A. So then how come we are taking this as P of F by A multiplied with P of A? So this is from the product rule. So product rule says that P of F intersection A is P of F by A multiplied with P of A. So this value directly I'm substituting for P of F by A multiplied with P of A, which is 0 0.03. If you simplify this value, we are getting a value of 0 0.15. Next, based on Bayes theorem, we can also compute most probable hypothesis. That is given a set of candidate hypothesis indicated with capital H and observed timing data, observed data D, we can find most probable hypothesis, which is also called as maximum or posteriori hypothesis. In short, it is MAP, 
maximum per posterior. Okay, it is a map hypothesis. We can calculate this value with the help of the Bayes theorem. So the formulation is like this: H map or maximum a posteriori hypothesis can be written as R max P of H by D for all H belongs to capital H. Okay. So from the Bayes theorem, we can write P of H by D as P of D by H multiplied with P of H divided by P of D. Okay. So here if you observe the denominator, so this is a constant. It is not varying with the value of the hypothesis H. So we are not very much interested in this. Actually, we can neglect this factor and we can only observe the product of P of D by H with P of H. Okay. So for all the hypotheses, that is from H1, H2, so on up to Hn, you have to compute the prior probability and conditional probability and multiply it. And finally, whichever gives you a maximum value, that means suppose if you get this value maximum for H3, then that is the result of H map. That is the most probable hypothesis. From this, we can also compute the maximum likelihood hypothesis. ML in short. M stands for maximum, L stands for likelihood. HML is equals to R max. HI belongs to capital H. P of D by HI. So it is only the conditional probability term. So if you apply an R max on the conditional probability of all the hypotheses, we are going to get the maximum likelihood hypothesis. Let us see one example and the H map for finding out the most probable hypothesis. Here is the example. This is a medical diagnosis problem in which there are two hypotheses. One is patient has cancer. The other one is the patient does not has cancer. And this data is taken from a laboratory test with two possible outcomes, positive and negative. And we have the prior knowledge that over the entire population, only 0.008 people have this particular disease. And the lab test is only an imperfect indicator of the disease. The test returns a correct positive result in only 98% of the cases in which the disease is actually present and correct negative result in 97% of the cases in which the disease is actually not present. Okay, let us first quickly write down the information that is given that is all of the information that the probability of people having cancer is 0 0.008 okay so from this we can also compute the probability of people not having cancer that is 1 minus 0 0.008 which is 0 0.992 and also it is given that correct positive result in 98% of the cases okay positive it is given when a person is having cancer the probability of this is 98% so it is 0 0.98 98 divided by 100 it is 0 0.98 so, it is predicting positively when a person is having cancer. So, the other one is predicting negatively when a person is having cancer. This is again 1 minus 0 0.98, which is 0 0.02. And also, it is given that. Uh, Correct negative result in 97% of the cases. Negative it is given when a person is not having cancer. Correct prediction in 97% of the cases. So it is 0 0.97. So the other possibility is it is predicting positive though a person is not having cancer.
that is 1 minus 0 0.97 it's 0 0.02 So now what are we supposed to find out? Suppose we now observe a new patient to whom the lab test returns a positive result. Should we diagnose the patient as having cancer or not? Okay. So here we have to calculate the HMAP for person having cancer and person not having cancer and whichever value is maximum that we will take. First let us calculate. The conditional probability multiplied with the prior probability P of cancer. This is equals to 0 0.98 multiplied with 0 0.08. 0 the simplified value of this is 0 0.0078. 0 so similarly, let us also compute for the other case that is P of B. person having cancer or not. Okay, so C of positive and the person is not having cancer. Your person predicting positive when a person is not having cancer multiplied with P of negation of cancer. So we already have these values which is 0 0.03 multiplied with 0 0.992. So the value of this is 0 0.29. 0 0298. Out of this, which is having a maximum value, so this is the maximum value. Actually, what we have computed here, we have computed H map of answer. We have also computed H map for not having cancer. So out of this, we got maximum value for H map of negation of cancer. So that means we can predict that the person has no cancer. Okay. So though the lab test returns a positive result from the data that we already have, we are predicting that this particular person is not having cancer. So this is how we can use the H map in order to predict the results of a disease. Here we have taken the help of the disease cancer. Hope you have followed. If you have any queries, please do post in the comment section. Thank you.